Hello, I'm Sarah Jossel, Sunday Time Stars Beauty Boss, a very barefaced beauty boss today. We are talking adult acne. It has been a really, really long journey, everything I've been through with it, and we are gonna cover all the tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way and how I have tackled it. Adult acne. It has been a really, really long journey. So I'll just give you guys the basics. So I'm 33. I have had acne probably since about 13, 14 years old. I decided to do this video with absolutely no makeup on because I think it's really important for you guys to, to be able to see my skin, um, to understand my journey. As a teenager, um, I had angry, irritable spots that just came you know, out of nowhere and they would be big, pussy, <laughs> white heads um, that I wouldn't be able to control and they got me down and they made me feel terrible. It was mostly along my jawline. Um, I went to university and I thought, you know, I'm 18, surely all this teenage nonsense of acne goes away, but it only got worse. I gave myself such a hard time because so many people associate acne with teenagers and, you know, hormonal, grumpy teenagers. Why in my 20s was I still getting spots? This stat is so important for you guys to remember. 80% of teenagers do get acne, but then 15 to 20% of people over 25 go on to get acne way beyond those years. And it's also worth noting that loads of people get acne at times like um, if you go off the contraceptive pill, then suddenly your acne could break out or stress, lack of sleep, genetics, hormones, um, and actually the main one, we are using the wrong skincare. My spots only got worse at university and I would just sort of throw on any drying product I could find to try and get rid of it. I'd have like some good weeks and bad weeks, but I think the main thing is that I was never in control. They were in control of me and it was always up to them. So when university came to an end and I moved into the beauty industry, there was this real pressure to have great skin. I think something that also um, fooled me a lot is all oh, beauty editors are perfect, everything's glossy, and it's really important to me to share with you, you know, a real life journey that beauty editors aren't perfect. I have access to every type of product under the sun, which was something that frustrated me even further, because if I have products that, you know, some of them are over 100 pounds, some of them, a-listers said cleared up their skin, why am I still getting spots? And it would just be this horrible cycle of trying things and testing things with the hope that it would clear up my skin and it just wasn't working. So about a year ago, I decided to stop with all the guesswork, stop just throwing things at my face and I decided to see several different dermatologists and their advice was actually unanimous. They all said the same thing. Pretty much my biggest issue is the lack of consistency in my routine and the guesswork. So a product would come into the office and I would read that it says, this will cure acne and I would just, you know, throw it on my face and hope for the best. And what we all really need to do is strip it back completely. We need to go back to the absolute basics and figure out why our skin is reacting the way it's reacting. I call this a skincare diet. Skincare diet, skincare detox, call it whatever you want. But what this meant is I had to go home, opened the Beauty Boss cabinet of dreams and miracles and had to pack so many products away. So I'm talking like the coolest, trendiest brands, the expensive brands, you know, the packaging that looks really nice on my cab. I packed them, I packed it all away, put it all in a box. And I decided that I was going to take this really seriously. This is what the dermatologist told me. There are two very key steps. So number one, it's all about switching off the acne and reduce the number of active blemishes and clogged pores. And step two, once I had that under control, it was about keeping pores unclogged and dealing with issues like marked skin, darker areas, um, uneven skin texture. It's been a long year, there's been a few downs, but mostly ups, and I am gonna talk you guys through exactly what I've done. Before you commit to this journey, I think it's really important that you take these three questions on board. One, are you willing to commit to consistency? Number two, time. Things will get worse before they get better. Your skin will not look perfect tomorrow. So in some cases, it can take three to six months to see results. And three, 
the most important thing is to know what type of acne you have. Your first stop is going to see a dermatologist because they need to look at your skin and they need to tell you, is it hormonal? Is it just, you know, stress and anxiety? You need to understand exactly what your acne is before you treat it. Right, let's go to the bathroom and I will talk you through my morning and my evening regime and exactly what I do to get ready for the day and what I do at the end of the day. We are here, we're in the Beauty Boss bathroom. It's really important before I get started to remember that you have to listen to your skin. So this has worked for me and it's been brilliant, um, but you need to figure out how your skin will react to it. First step is cleansing. I've put this on so that I've got a clear canvas to work with. This is where it always begins for me. Now, Dr. Sam's Flawless Cleanser. Sam Bunting is one of the dermatologists that I went to see and she specializes in blemish prone acne. Two pumps, there you go. You can see hopefully that, that texture. It's like a really, really soft jelly. What I really want you all to do is to spend at least 60 seconds just really cleansing the face, getting off everything so that you've got a clear canvas. It's obviously slightly more important in the evening when you've got makeup to get off. But that's your first step. So 60 seconds round the clock. Okay, so water. Okay, so cleansing done. What all that is doing is just cleaning my skin, getting anything off it. So once I've patted my face dry, I am using azelaic acid. So this is one from The Ordinary. If you go to a dermatologist, they may recommend that you use a prescription one, but for today, The Ordinary. It's brilliant for lightening any darker areas, pigmentation, uneven skin tone. This is the absolute dream ingredient for it. I'm gonna pop tiny, tiny amount the back of my hand. And Sam Bunting, she has a technique, she calls it the 13 dots. And I just swear by it because then you know it's all over your face because often we'll apply something and actually not realize we've left half of our face. So let's do her dots. Oh, I, I look gorgeous. Look at that. Right, her dots. Two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, one, two. So once you've done your 13 dots, you want to very, very, very lightly just massage. That's it, that's all you need. Once your skin is tolerating it and you're not seeing any flare ups, you can then get a bit more confident and use it more often. But as I said, start very, very slowly. Once I've done my azelaic acid, Try and wait 10 minutes when possible. If you're in a rush, it's not the end of the world, but if you can wait 10 minutes, do. Right, 10 minutes is up and it's time to moisturize. Now, a couple of options here. I've got the Aven Hydrating Cream. We've got La Roche-Posay, Tolerian, Sensitive Rouge. I don't mind which one you choose. I actually pick and choose as I go, depending on what my skin feels like. So moisturizer, very simple. Just, oh, this is one I've almost finished. I'm using the event here, it's the hydrating cream. Why this moisturizer over other ones? It's not greasy, it's not gonna affect my makeup. The next and arguably the most important step, um, especially when you are using active ingredients is SPF. But you know that, I know you know that, but I will just remind you, SPF. The one I've got today is HelioCare 360. Um, this has SPF 50, it says it's a water gel. If I just put it on, you can see there, good healthy amount, and you want to get it all over. Covering everywhere. And I hope you guys can see that there is no horrible white, you know, chalky residue. It just feels a bit like you're applying a second moisturizer, which to me is so important. Just to clear a couple of things up, anyone who has told you that your skin will be much better if you just put it in the sun, it will clear everything up. Um, no, just don't believe that. You always need to wear SPF in the sun. And in the winter, you do need your SPF too. Maybe not your SPF 50, or you don't need to be, you know, as, as, as strict, but you should be wearing SPF all year round. Makeup. 
I will take off this band for my makeup. So let's get this on. Been out all day, time to take my makeup off. This is where people get so complex with their routines. They do the weirdest, strangest 25 step routines and just none of it is necessary. So putting my hair back up and getting my trusted headband. Hilarious, this one's got my initials on, of course it does. Three steps, it's what I've got here. Same cleanser as the morning, this is even more important now than it was in the morning to really get everything off your face. So two, well, that was one and a half really. You ready? I'm gonna turn around and wash this off. So you can see my face now. And this I should be doing for at least, say 60 to 90 seconds. I'm melting the makeup off. Get your flannel once you've cleansed and massaged the product off. You then get your flannel and just make sure every last scrap is off. So, see there. <sighs> Retinoids, where to begin? Well, all I can tell you is this is by far the most common question I get. So, lots of things to say here. Um, I will try and keep it as concise and clear as possible. The one I've got here is tretinoin, and this is a prescription retinoid, only because it is very strong. The way you apply it is that same 13 dot technique that we saw earlier with the azelaic acid. So, putting it onto my finger, I'm following Sam Bunting who would do just the amount that it covers for your finger. And now the 13 dots, so you can see just how little. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, one, two. And the reason why you're doing that is you're making sure that you're covering out everywhere. Areas to avoid, closely to under your eyes and your lips. They're two areas that are really prone to dryness. So you can either completely avoid them. If you are worried that you're gonna go anywhere close, there is a technique that people use called the buffering technique. And you can apply moisturizer to those areas before your retinoid so that they're protected. They act as a buffer to the retinoid. This is, I'm just doing it exactly how I do it at home. So when I first started using it, I did it on a Monday and a Thursday and then I built it up, so I'm now using it every other day, every two to three days. Not every day yet. So it's on, and I do my best now to wait 10 to 15 minutes to just leave it on its own. I will never forget when a skincare expert from SkinCeuticals described retinoids as a diva molecule. And the reason why you call them diva molecules is because they want to just have their own show. So you don't do anything else to it, you just leave them on its own to work its magic. Now, if you are not experiencing too much dryness, too much flakiness, the retinoid would like to be left alone. You could just go to bed now. Done your retinoid, go to bed. However, most of us are dealing with dryness and flakiness when we're using the product. So that is where your moisturizer comes in. So same as the ones from this morning in terms of love all of them. I also love CeraVe. This is a moisturizing cream for dry to very dry skin. It's, it's a bit more of a balm. Love the texture and I just use it because I do experience flakiness and dryness. I do need something which is really going to help. 15 minutes after my retinoid, go back into the bathroom, take my moisturizer and I just really, really massage it in. And guys, honestly, that's it. So I've got no gimmicks here, no special steps. My evening routine is so short. It's kind of feels like I should be going on and on, but that is what I have been recommended. Step one, cleanser. Step two, retinoid. Step three, moisturizer. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Little, little, little extra products here. 
I'm just going to talk you through. These are obviously not for every day, but they are products I introduce here and there. So fake tan, there's so many fake tans are going to block your pores and just cause havoc. Loads of them are packed with oils um, that are not going to be your friends. So it is expensive, but every dermatologist I've spoken to recommends it. It's the Sizzly Self-Tanning Hydrating Facial Skincare. I can honestly say that this can last me half a year. It gives the most gorgeous bronzed glow to your skin. So, you know, on a night where I'm not using a retinoid, I would do cleanser, then I would do fake tan and moisturizer. Second, once a week, I will do a mask if my skin needs it. This is the Aven Soothing Moisture Mask. It is a fail-safe all-rounder. Winter, especially, people love this mask. You leave it on for 10 to 15 minutes and it's just like a really, really, really zooped up moisturizer. And if you do see a massive whopper spot coming your way, you don't have to panic. It's Duac Gel, and that's got benzyl peroxide in. You can actually get over the counter in the US, interestingly, but it's on prescription in the UK. Let's talk about prescriptions. So how easy is it to get it? You've got to go to your GP or a dermatologist, and they are the ones who will be able to prescribe you with Duac and Tretinoin that both have been mentioned in my video today. So that is my morning routine, my makeup routine, my PM routine, and my special occasion products. I hope you found this video really useful. And if you are having a bad skin day, just remember all of us have them. Let me know if there's anything else that you want me to cover. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all soon.